Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Covenant Custom, and I recently picked up this K1 Max for a future project. Along with it came a bunch of accessories, including this Soval dual spool filament dryer. Now, the previous owner was going to throw this in the trash because the bearing within the fan has failed, causing this horrendous noise. Needless to say, it was getting on his nerves, and I knew that I'd be able to restore it. So today we're going to be covering the replacement of the fan with what I've got on hand. To start, we're going to remove the base plate from the bottom of the chamber. They are secured by these four screws in the corners. And to do so, you're going to need a thin shaft Phillips screwdriver, commonly found in computer repair kits, so that we can get down the narrow channel and access each of the four screws. Once those four have been disengaged, I'll simply leave the hardware within the channels so that they don't bounce off the table and get lost in the abyss of a carpet. And I'll take that base plate and set it aside. Now that we've exposed the faulty fan, we can pull it out of its slot. Taking a look at the label, I'll note that it's a 4010 12 volt for this Soval and potentially ComGrow system. Luckily, I had two of these fans on hand for whatever project I plan to throw them in. To start, I'm going to get an approximate location in which I'll be snipping both of the wires as the fans that I've got do not make the whole run. By snipping the fan, I'm able to go ahead and match it up against the existing fan and wire set and snip it in the same location. With that trash removed, we can carry on to the following steps. With the new fan, I'll place it in the existing slot and check our wire run to make sure that they meet. But we're going to need to connect these somehow so that we can get power to the fan. The connector is on the front I.O. board, and there is a bit of hot glue on top to secure it. After removing that, I'll be able to pull the connector itself. Moving that out of the way, we're going to set up our soldering station so that we can connect these two. Now before we go ahead and solder the new fan and the existing or additional length of wire that came off of the original unit, we're going to need to prep these so that the connection can be soldered. By splitting the two wires apart, both red and black, you're going to want to be able to access each of the wires individually, and I'll complete that process on both the fan and the connector sides. To expose the wires further, I'm going to take my snips and remove a small length so that there's a tail of wire showing from each. Because we're going to be putting solder on these wires, I want to be able to protect them, so prior to soldering them together, I will put heat shrink on one side. Using some helpers, I'm able to get the wires together so that I can connect them by soldering the points that we just exposed. Sliding the heat shrink over top, I'll go ahead and heat it up so that we can get a proper seal on the fresh wires that we had cut and just connected. I'll perform the same process for both sides. After both wires have been soldered and properly heat shrinked, it's time to test to make sure that this fan is operational. So instead of doing the run, I'll just plug it into the connector port, plugging the dryer back into power, and setting it to run, we got success. The fact that the fan is running, despite my poor soldering skills, is a great achievement on my part. Now that that's secured, we're going to take the base plate, put it back in its appropriate location, and tighten up the four screws that we loosened to remove it earlier. Now for the final test to make sure that there's no resonance or vibration once it's installed. And this thing is quiet as can be. There's no more talking back for this fan. So was this Soval truly destined for the trash? Not in my book. But for some, that fan noise may be an inconvenience enough to replace it altogether. But with as simple as it is to replace the fan if you get the appropriate length, I'd say to just swap it. If you're like me, resourceful, and have parts on hand, by all means, go through the process that I just had to restore operations. With the 50 degrees Celsius max temp that this dryer arrives at, it's good for the low temp filaments, but for ABS ASA and beyond, it takes a considerable amount of time longer and may be worth considering another option. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you all and look forward to catching you on the next video.